Yo, what's going on guys? It's Oni here. I just wanted to come on and make a quick kind of guide for healing and damage um, and strength of thorn veil and horse on gold. Just go over my gear, go over runes, go over talents. So let's get into it. Going over my gear, I have the epic crafting tailoring helm. This is really good with arcane surge just because you get so much spell power and you can just do so much damage as you've seen in my previous videos. I actually got the epic necklace from Nomergon on my last raid so really excited to test this out and see how much it affects my damage. I have the Invoker's Mantle from Phase 1 still. I've been a little bit lazy about trying to grind Scarlet Monastery to get the shoulders. I did try, but after like 4 or 5 runs at level 40, I just gave up and figured I would wait to get the Nomergon shoulders instead. I have the STV back. I have the Elemental Cloth chest piece. Robes of the Magi are a little bit better, but they were pretty expensive in the Auction House, and this was kind of a cheap alternative. It also runs well with Magic Absorption, which I'll get to later. Um, same thing with the Arcane Wrath um, wrists. I think there's plus 14 on the Auction House, but we're going with the Economy Plus version and just getting the plus 11 damage. I have the Tailoring Gloves. I have the Epic Engineering Belt. This one's decent with the burst damage. 3% crit isn't nothing, but it being a 15 minute cooldown makes it a little bit harder to line up. But, I mean, it definitely adds to the burst whenever you get the crit, anyways. Alright, so I have the tier set for the boots and the pants. I'm not sure which tier set's going to be better between the hyperconductive set and the irradiated set. You do lose a lot of stamina, but you gain a lot of spell power. I'm wanting to test this one first because of the three set chance on spell cast to increase your damage and healing by up to 40. I'm not really sure how that's going to work, but I think you can maybe tweak it to where just keep casting something over and over and over until you get the buff and then do some an insane amount of damage. Um, so I want to test that out. I think it'll be fun. I do like having extra stamina, of course, just make it a little bit more healthier um, whenever you're running around. I have the Lord Keeper's Ring from Warsong Gulch. I have the SDV Arcane Damage Ring. I have the Warsong Gulch um, Trinket and then the Black Feathered Depths Trinket. And then I'm running with the Arcane Wand from the Mage Quest and the Epic Staff from Nomergon. All right, so getting into our talents, I have two in Arcane Subtlety, three in Arcane Focus, five in Arcane Concentration, and five in Magic Absorption. I'm still messing around with this talent. I'm not sure how good it is. Um, I think in STV, it might be a little bit more worth it than in Warsong Gulch, um, but this combined with Elemental chest piece and mage armor gives you a little bit more resistance for everything and gives you some mana back so i thought it was pretty nice um arcane missiles improved arcane missiles might be a little bit better or maybe something with improved mana shield and um arcane explosion might be decent but i'm still messing around with all of that i have arcane resilience three in arcane meditation two in improved counter spell one in presence of mind five in arcane mind three in arcane instability and one in arcane power Okay, so going over the runes for Stranglethorn and Veil. For the chest piece, I'm still debating between Burnout and Enlightenment. Right now, I'm leaning towards Enlightenment just for the extra mana regen. This combined with our Arcane Meditation and Mage Armor gives us um, like 55% mana regen while casting. Um, below 30% mana, that is. Um, which is just really good, especially for Stranglethorn Veil. Whenever you're having long fights, you're in combat for a long amount of time and you're having to just kind of work with the mana that you have. Moving on to the gloves, I usually run Living Bomb over Arcane Blast. I think it's just easier to get tags on people, um, especially whenever you're running into a fight and does a good amount of damage later on. Um, you usually don't have time to cast Arcane Blast, especially if you have like a mob on you or a hunter pet or a melee on you. Uh, just two seconds is a really long time whenever someone's attacking you. Um, or the waste spots i usually always run arcane barrage or missile barrage it's pretty much best for arcane it also works well with rank one frostbolt so i'll just spam rank one frostbolt if i'm not needing to heal or if it's just like a couple people and living bomb's not going to be that worth it and if i get a proc then it's really nice for me to just have that little bit of extra burst for the pants i usually run icy veins sometimes i'll switch in living flame it's just to get more tags do a little bit more burst damage but Icy Vange is really good for countering against whenever a melee gets on top of you or you have a Hunter Pet on you that's fast. Um, also, just the extra haste allows you to heal your team 
um, especially whenever there's multiple people attacking one target. Um, that burst healing just helps. And then Chronosite Preservation. So I am pretty much running this for Battlegrounds and STV, just because you need the burst healing. The reason why I'm not using Regeneration or Master Generation that much is one, it can be purged, which feels really bad. Um, but two, just casting that casting regeneration on someone and then trying to cast an arcane blast is just really slow. And whenever you have multiple people attacking one person, they're gonna die pretty fast. Um, so you might be able to get one arcane blast off, but by the time you try to cast the second, you're gonna get kicked, attacked, or they're just gonna already be dead. Um, so I prefer Carnotic Preservation. I think it's really good. Two seconds, like a thousand healing every time. Um, it's gonna be consistent, and you can also just kind of save it for later. Um, because it lasts 18 seconds, so you can cast it and then start doing damage, start casting polys, whatever you need, and then um, heal whenever you need to. So for healing, I mostly just use Chronostatic Preservation. Um, for STV, I'll switch between um, Icy Veins and Living Flame. If Icy Veins is on cooldown, if I can, I'll switch. But usually I'm in combat for a long time, so I'll just stick with Icy Veins anyways. Um... I'll try to play kind of a medium distance away from my team so that I can blink into them if I get a melee on me, um, but I'm not going to be attacked by the people that they are on. Usually I don't get focused at first because I think I'm just doing damage. They usually target like a Shadow Priest in our group first, so I have a little bit more leniency, but as soon as they kind of come after me, I'm pretty uh, squishy. So just trying to get away like quickly, saving blink to get them for a stun or to... Um, get away really fast is really good. I know that sometimes like I'll blink in and then immediately like just get killed because I don't have blink. Um, being a gnome helps with escape artist. Um, or then I'll try to throw tags on people as well with living bomb or living flame when I can. But yeah, I mean, STV is kind of crazy. I think that positioning is really important. I always like to play on the hill up here. You can kind of like hide behind a tree, get on a big hill, get some tags, then like all retreat back to here whenever you need to. Um, and then of course, if the boss is right here too, it's like an insane amount of way to get blood, like over a thousand, um, if you do it right. All right, so for Warsong Gulch, I usually run with Burnout. The burst healing is just really nice and you have more downtime in between fights so you can get a drink in between. I run with Arcane Blast on the gloves, which I'll get to in just a second. Um, Arcane Barrage or Arcane Missiles. Missile Barrage, there we go. Missile Barrage on the Waste, um, it's just whenever it procs, it's extremely good. Good amount of burst damage. Ow, I start off with Icy Veins for the first team fight, and then as soon as they pick up the flag, or maybe um, if I know that I'm not going to change before we engage with their flag carrier, I'll put on Arcane Surge. Um, and so whenever I'm getting ready to do my burst, like, I'll just need to change pretty much one rune. Sometimes I'll try to switch to spell power if I have time or if I know, like, my only goal is to kill the, um, EFC. Um, so that's why I run Arcane Blast over, like, Living Bomb or anything like that. Um, also, whenever you're in the back line of Warsong Gulch, you can get away with casting Arcane Blast, like, here and there, help you get procs. Um, but mostly you're just pressing Chronostatic Preservation to help heal your team. Okay, so my healing rotation is just spamming chronostatic preservation for the most part um and there's not really much more to that i will say like keeping it loaded and then waiting to heal someone like if they're at 80 percent health waiting until they drop to like 60 or so is um pretty helpful that way you can have a couple goals to like arcane blast or frost bolt or um just a quick fire blast here and there um polys are really good more sun as well um and then for my burst rotation what I have or what I do is I will Arcane Power, use the Belt, use the Helm, Presence of Mind, Arcane Blast into Arcane Surge. And then if they live that, I will Mana Jade into Fire Blast. You can use Mana Jade before your Arcane Surge for a little bit more damage. But usually they just are dead as soon as you press Arcane Surge with like 3,000 damage, right? Um, and that's just the Arcane Surge. Sometimes I'll have a crit for like 1,400 from the Arcane Blast, which is insane. But yeah, whenever I see an EFC or whenever I'm going, as soon as I get the flag, I immediately am rushing to try to get there and do that burst. And I try to wait to do that burst until I'm closer to them. That way I can immediately kill them and then pick up the flag because I have killed an EFC just to realize that I wasn't close enough to get the flag and they just pick the flag right up and you have zero mana and you just die instantly. 
So I will always make sure that I am close enough to retrieve the flag after I kill him or to just blink in after I kill him to immediately pick up the flag. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. My next video is going to be looking at several different battlegrounds, of course, on Gulch, and just kind of highlights and clips of me one shotting flag carriers and just healing anyone and everyone who's at 50% health. So I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.